coming into this week and coming off your bye, and now you're leaving this game with your fourth straight loss. Just what's the headspace of the team right now? Angry, frustrated. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Like, anytime we lose, ain't no need to be happy, but. It's the same thing. After every loss, you know what we got to do. We got to get back to the drawing boards and, and fix things. What would you say that, that frustration is pointed towards? Is it just results on the field? Is it internal? It's just not scoring not, not scoring many points and defense letting too many points up. I say me, me being the leader of the defense, I, looking at that scoreboard, seeing 38, that's too much. I know we got to fix that. I know we're going to go back to the drawing board, and I'm going I'm to lead the guys better. That was something new. Virginia Tech usually didn't do that at all. That was something they did for us. So it, it was new. I feel like we adjusted to it really good. But at the end of the day, you know, too many rushing yards happened today. Andy? How do you take a game like today with something after a bye week that you guys were pretty high on going in? How do you take a loss like today and move forward with the season for the last couple of years? Just everybody putting everybody putting their process aside and really focusing on how they can get better. Every single like kicking game, special teams, offense, defense, coaching staff, shrimp staff, media staff, everybody we're gonna come together and all of Ohana gonna come together and figure out how we can get back on that winning side. In these last four games you've allowed at least thirty points every time. You lose thirty five. Do you kind of take something from that and, and like is there something kind of big picture that you guys are starting to change? Don't let them score that much no more. Simple. Uh, I know the past couple of weeks you guys have kind of said that felt like the game plan has been there. It's just been execution. Would you say that was the case again today, or was it something different? Just the beginning of the game, Virginia Tech came out with something different, came out a whole different offense. So caught us by surprise. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you right, we got to execute. That's all it is. Anthony again? Was it entirely new, or was there any sort of film that you kind of had on them running that not, not, not entirely new. They just, like you said, the outside run. They just did something different that just caught us by surprise. But at the end of the day, we got to execute the call. Everybody just get to the ball, all eleven to the ball, which we didn't do that today. Ryan and Jack, uh, it seemed to be that there was a little bit of frustration on the sidelines at the beginning of the game. How is, as a leader, do you kind of like quell that and try to get everybody to just play together and, and back in that? I mean, frustration is it's going to happen regardless. Anytime something like that is going to happen, so like we're all, we're all going in on the sideline. We know how to we know how to bring our temper back down to to get level hit so we can go back out there and play. So it's just, it's just a quick little conversation with the guys. So it's nothing really too hard. Jack, is there anything about Tyron Drones that surprised you once you started playing face to face with him? He's 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 really talented. He has a strong arm, and he's just he's a hard runner. That's what I give him. It felt like you guys had some of your best like defensive stops correct right, coming out of the half. Was there anything Coach Long said to kind of change up the game approach when you realized the Virginia Tech offense was taking a little different approach than you planned? We just executed those two drives, which we need to do that every single drive. How do you feel like you did that today? Oh uh, yeah, I mean I have to. It's hard to I have to go back and watch it, but um, I mean the biggest thing today that uh, from right now from without watching, I think, is uh, just helping O-line out a little bit on my part, um, just getting rid of the ball. You know, I tried extensive plays, and I ran into some sacks. So um, there is that. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was a tough day at the office. But, uh, you know, we still got plenty of football left ahead of us and uh, still got time to figure some things out. But, um, you know, the biggest thing is just staying together and uh, making sure that we're going out. And off offensively, obviously, we're not doing good enough. So. Um, We'll just figure it out. And I know there's a lot of things that I messed up today that kind of put us in a bad spot. So uh, just combine all that stuff. But we'll have to watch it and get back and then uh, be able to figure out and, and uh, what we need to do moving forward. You had Coach Beck on the sideline with you last year, coaching you kind of face-to-face, -face, and now he's been up in the in the box. Would you like to see him back down on the sideline? Dino said it wasn't something he's considered yet. No, I, it doesn't really make a difference. I mean, same conversations. and. Honestly, I think it's probably better for him to be up there just in terms of you can see the whole field. And, and uh, he has a lot better insight, you know, when we get on the headset. So, um, yeah, he just – it doesn't make a difference to me.
who's been that coach that the offense kind of turns to on the sideline back this season? Is it Camp Nelly? Is it someone else? Uh, coach Harris for us, the quarterbacks. And uh, he's been, um, he's kind of that direct line from from Coach Beck. But um, yeah, no, we, we got a good uh, communication structure. So it, everything is passed off. We'll go to Anthony. Um, I guess this is for both of you guys. Um, Coach said after the last four weeks, like everything is kind of up for uh, interpretation in terms of what might need to change on offense. What do you kind of feel has like been the biggest issue uh, over this last couple couple weeks? Uh, I'll go ahead. And, uh, I mean, the whole thing is just everybody. It, it takes all eleven at one time, and I'm making sure we're dialed in, and um, you know, we're we're kind of targeting some different guys and doing some different things. But um, yeah, I mean, it just takes it takes all eleven every play. And uh, that's most of our struggle is one guy uh, on any given play, um, not doing the right thing. You know, for example, like it might, one play it might be uh, me. You know, I don't pull the ball and throw to the open guy in RPO. And the next play, you know, one guy slips up on a block. It's just putting all those things together it compounds really fast. So, um, uh, but we'll watch it and get back. So you know, it, uh, it's been a, it's been a tough stretch, but you know, there's still plenty of football left. So uh, a lot of time to figure some stuff out and see, see what we can do. Is there something schematically you guys think you could change to avoid those mistakes that are happening week after week? Uh, I mean, we are we are doing some different things, and um, you know, for example, we had a couple of good drives where we had things moving, got some tempo going, and then uh, the other the biggest thing is just for me personally avoiding you know loss losses on the first down. That's kind of been a, a common theme that I got to be better at. And um, because it just puts us behind the chains, it's hard to go and be efficient doing that. So, um, I mean, that's one thing I can look off the bat, but the rest of us kind of have to watch and figure out what, what we could do better. You mentioned being successful off tempo. Is that something you'd like to do more earlier in the game? Yeah, I mean, but you got to get first downs. So when you first drive, you go three and out, you know, you can't really do it. So um, just getting that first first down is going to be important too. And to go off uh, what Garrett said, um, I think it's just all 11 guys doing their job on each play. You know, um, that's really what it comes down to. I think the scheme is, is good. Emily? Dan, some visible frustration from you and I think some of your teammates early in the game today. Just I, what's been the most frustrating part of this four game stretch for you guys? I think just shooting ourselves in the foot, penalties, um, one guy making a great play, another guy not making a great play. So it just kind of ruins momentum. Um, I think we just got to be on the same page, and we got to watch film, and we got to just keep keep improving. Back to the third row. From an offensive standpoint, what's the main goal for this week? Talk about next week. Or yeah, it's coming. Boston College. Oh, uh, I mean, go out and score as many points as possible. You know, we got to help the defense out more, and um, mm -hmm. what we've been doing hadn't been cutting it, so. Um, we'll talk and have uh, we have all those heart-to-heart -heart conversations, you know, and uh, just got to be honest. And so the first place I look is in the mirror, and uh, I know there's some things that I did today that really shot us in the foot and didn't help us. So uh, cleaning that up and then everybody else, you know, just kind of going out and making plays and playing free. And uh, that's when we're at our best. So, um, you know, we can't play up tight, but, you know, there's plenty of, plenty of time left, so we got to figure it out this week and get back to the drawing board. And um, I mean, but I'm excited. And a uh, big thing is just we got to stay together, and uh, we got a good group of guys. So hopefully, we can flip the script this week. Okay, Colin Moore, starting with Anthony. Do the penalties and, and kind of one guy faltering every play at week nine does that concern you guys? Um, yeah, I think it definitely concerns. Uh, it's definitely a big concern because we uh, emphasize it so much in practice. Um, we got a lot of young guys on the offense, and um, you know, we, it's not like we're not emphasizing this. We're talking about it all the time. So um, I think we just all got to look in the mirror and, you know, fix fix the problems that we're all causing. Yeah, and I think another part of that, too, is there's a lot of variables and moving parts just with guys going down, like today at Maury. Um, so like we were moving guys around and trying to put them in different positions so we could go out and uh, give ourselves the best chance. So that's kind of been the biggest thing, fighting uphill battles. So guys are a little bit out of position. but. Um, you know, the biggest thing is just go ahead and compete and play with heart. And um, if we can do that, then 
I mean, I think everything else will take care of itself. But, yeah, little penalties, they shoot us in the foot. And then, um, yeah, but, and i got to be better, too, early on early downs so we don't get behind the chains. So is the disconnect like that people are getting going down throughout games, like from practice to games, what is the disconnect? In terms, what do you mean? In terms of if, if you're preaching it in practice and talking about it all throughout the week, why does it still happen during the game? Well, because we're moving guys around every week. So, I mean, you can't, like, if I put you in a different position, for one game, like you're not gonna do everything perfect. So like, there's that element of it. You know, we're shuffling guys around, and you know, we lost OG and Trev early in the season, big part of the offense. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're just fighting and scratching and clawing to do what we can get. So it's nobody's gonna be perfect, and you know, we we have to do things out of necessity. So there's a learning curve, and you're learning on the fly in the game. So that's. It's a struggle as it is. So, but um, just keep a good attitude and making sure we're going out and playing hard. That's the b- biggest thing we can do. And um, you know, I love these guys. I love this team. So, uh, it's a struggle. But you know, there's nobody else I'd rather do it with. And there's still a lot of football left. So you know, just keep building week to week, and uh, we'll get it going. And last question, Sydney. You talked about just like playing freely. What do you think it is? You think it's almost like internal pressure that everyone's putting on themselves, wanting to be the guy to flip the script. Now, can you overcome? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. Um, but I think the biggest thing is just going out and make a play, and then everybody else will feed off of that. And um, just build momentum. And right now it almost kind of feels like if we do something good and get a pl- good play, I mean, most of the time it seems like it's been coming back. So, um, yeah, but just building off of the plays. And we got some guys going out and playing hard. And, um I mean, if we just keep that that mentality and the, the effort, then that things will eventually will good will happen. So, you know, I'm not I'm not terribly worried about it. You know, it is frustrating and it's um, it's hard to sit there and be proud of a performance when you're not really putting up any points and not moving the ball very well. So, um, but I mean, we got we got we got talented guys and there's a lot of hope for this team. So, um, just taking it day by day, and we'll continue to learn from this and build off of it and um, try to get a win next week. But, you know, it's not going to be easy. Every week's not going to be easy, and we know that. So um, just figure out what we can do to go out and score more points and try to get a win.